everyone to stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight's invocation is being offered by Council Member Darren Jernigan. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Before, I, before we pray, I want to say a, uh, the passing of Rabbi Randall Falk to give condolences to his family, his friends, and to the entire Jewish community. community I'm sure he'll uh, be missed. Uh, bow your heads, please. Dear Lord, as the supreme architect of all things, thank you for this wonderful city, the people who run it, and especially my colleagues who make decisions for it. Bless their families and their health. Forgive us for our sins. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Without objection, we'll suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of the members present throughout the meeting. Is there a motion for the approval of our minutes from January 7th? We have a motion and a second. Without objection, the minutes will stand approved as written. Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? There are no messages from the mayor. Thank you. Uh, before we get into our agenda, I just want to say that um, I received a letter this afternoon, and tonight is Council Member Darren Jernigan's last night with us. He is resigning effective tomorrow as the Council Member for um, District 11. Just want to say that it has been an honor and a pleasure and a privilege to serve with you, and thank you so much for your service. Council member Megan Berry has agreed to represent the people of District 11 until a special election can be held on August the 7th. <laughs> it's not effective until tomorrow at midnight. Okay. Uh, we'll now get into elections and confirmations. Council Member Barry. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. The uh, <laughs> Elections and Confirmations Committee met, and for the Alarms Appeals Board, we voted 8 4 0 against for the reappointment of Mr. Charles Scott. I, I'm going to take all of them. Uh, we also had wet and for the Arts Commission and for the reappointment of Mr. Joseph Presley, Ms. Hope Stringer, Mr. Santi Teffel, we voted 8 4 0 against. For the Planning Commission, the appointment of Ms. Lillian Blackshear, we voted 8 4 0 against. For the Work Release Board, we voted uh, miss for Mr. Dennis Blackwelder, Mr. Larry Bryant, Mr. Joseph DiMartini, Ms. Faye Ellis, and Mr. Doug Purdy, 8-4-0 against. And with that, I'd like to move approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Council Member Berry. And uh, I'd like to, can we take out of order? Is there a deferral? On one of oh them. yes, ma'am. I'm so sorry. Uh, we actually deferred Dr. Uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Doug Morgan for one meeting, eight four zero against. And I'd like to move approval. Is there a motion? There's a motion and a second for one meeting deferral. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Uh, without objection, we're going to take RS 2014-972 out of order. It confirms the appointment of Waverly Crenshaw to the Board of Directors of the Tennis of the Convention Center Authority. Council Member Berry. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report is 840 against. And with that, I move approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Uh, when I call your name, please stand and remain standing. Charles Scott, Joseph Presley, Hope Stringer, Santee Tafel, Waverly Crenshaw, Lillian Blackshear, Dennis Blackwelder, Larry Bryant, Joseph DiMartini, Faye Ellis, and Don Purdy. 
On behalf of the entire Metro Council, thank you for your willingness to serve our great city. Thank you very much. We're now at the resolution on public hearing, RS 2014-962, exempts Treehouse Restaurant located at 1011 Clearview Avenue from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Council Member Westerholm. I move to open the public hearing. Please raise your hand if you're in support. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, would anyone in support wish to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Westerholm. Move approval. We need a committee report. Council oh, Member Purdue. That bill was approved 4-0 by public safety. Thank you. Council Member Westerholm. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Move approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. We're now at resolutions on our consent agenda. I will tell you which ones are not. Um, and then I will read the ones that are, and you can tell me if we need to pull others. RS 2014-948 is not on the consent and RS 2014-963 is not on the consent agenda. 951, then 964 through 971 are on the consent. Um, 951 extends the license and franchise of the Nashville Gas Company for an additional period. 964 approves an amendment to a grant from the Cities for Financial Empowerment Fund to the Mayor's Office of Economic and Community Development to support municipal efforts to improve financial stability of households. 965 approves an amendment to the charging side host agreement between Metro Government and Blink Acquisition LLC as a successor in interest to Electric Transportation Engineering Corporation. 966 approves an application for a major cultural institution grant from the Tennessee Arts Commission to the Metro Nashville Arts Commission. 967 approves an application for a teacher training grant from the Tennessee Arts Commission to the Metro Arts Commission to develop common core unit plans and professional development sessions based on the civil rights public art. 968 accepts a donation from Fred Zink to Metro Nashville Fire Department in conjunction with the annual Hero Hack campaign. 969 approves a contract with Helicorp to supply helicopter parts for the Metro Nashville Police Department. 970 approves a subrecipient grant agreement between the Metropolitan Development and Housing Agency and the Department of Social Services Metropolitan Homelessness Commission to provide rental and utility deposits for homeless individuals. And 971 authorizes the Department of Law to compromise and settle the damage claim of Borden Dairy Company against Metro Government in the amount of $16,344. Do any of these need to be pulled? Seeing none, I will need committee reports. Council Member Stein. Thank you, Vice Mayor. 951, 964, 965, 966, 967, 968, 969, 970, and 971. Budget and financed voted to approve 12 4. None against. Thank you, Council Member Maynard. Thank you, Vice Mayor, for 970 Health and Hospitals approved 9 4 0 against. Thank you, Council Member Perdue. 968, 969 was approved 4-0. Thank you. Council Member uh, Resolution 214-951, pass the Public Works Committee 5-0. and zero. Thank you. Council Member Barry. Thank you, Vice Mayor. With all committee reports and I move consent agenda. Is there a second? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The consent agenda passes. We will go back to RS 2014-948 appropriating $13,100,000 from the undesignated fund balance of the Metro Schools General to Metro Schools. Council Member Mitchell. Yeah, I move to defer this one meeting. Uh, I need a quick committee report. Council Member Stein. Budget voted to defer 12-4, none against. 
and who's doing education? Councilmember Blaylock. Education 640 against. Thank you. Councilmember Mitchell. Yeah, and I, I just want to say, you know, I think we're heading in the right direction with getting the needs we need for our students, but we also have got to have our teachers prepared to teach this test. So I, I'm going to keep this going uh, until I see the needs have been met of the teachers as well as the students. Uh, but I think we're heading in the right direction of giving our kids the tools they need to succeed. And with that being said, move for one meeting deferral. We have a motion and a second for a one meeting deferral. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. RS 2014-963 issues general obligation bonds in the aggregate principal amount of $15 million. Council Member Stein. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. The Budget and Finance Committee voted first to substitute and then to defer for one meeting under our rules. Um, I would move approval and the substitute um, first. We have a motion and a second on the substitute. Um, with a brief comment on the substitute. Um, the substitute, um, members of the council, adds um, the approximately $6 million, which would be used for school uh, technology purchase, um, which is, I think, their, um, which is the the agreement that has been worked out with schools um, and the mayor. And under our rules, after we substitute, we need to defer for one meeting. Um, and I would first move the substitute. We have a motion and a second on the substitute. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Substitute passes. Councilman Stein. Move deferral of the bill as substituted for one meeting. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of deferral of the substitute for one meeting, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Next, we are at bills on introduction and first reading. Do any of these need to be pulled? Is there a motion for their approval? We have a motion and a second for approval of bills on introduction and first reading. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. We're at bills on second reading, BL 2013-494. Changes 0.98 acres from R6 to MUNA zoning for properties located at 916, 918, 920. 2000, 2002, 2004, and 2006 Eastland Avenue. Councilmember Westerholm. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Uh, this is a bill that is tracking another bill that is uh, going to be up for the first meeting of, um, of February. So this was one that we had discussed back last year related to an SP uh, for some properties. The meetings we had with the neighborhood uh, resulted in the decision that everyone was comfortable with rezoning the properties with the inclusion of a conservation overlay. So this is the land use zoning portion of that. And next, next meeting, we'll be discussing both of these bills on third reading. I wanted them to move in concert. So uh, with I that explanation. I, Councilman Hunt, did you all consider this in your committee? Yes, we did. Do you have a committee report? Yes, ma'am, we do. Would you please give it? <laughs> the <laughs> Planning Zoning Historic Commission approved Bill 494941 against. Thank you, Councilman Hunt. You're welcome. Councilmember Westerholm. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Uh, with that explanation, I would move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2013-603 amends the Metro Code pertaining to the regulation of small outdoor music events on commercial property. Council Member Mitchell. Yeah, uh, I think I've been working with uh, Council Lady uh, Allen uh, on this issue, so I would like to defer indefinitely. I need to get some committee. Oh, before. sorry. Council Member Moore. Um, the sponsor requested to defer this indefinitely. And your vote? Oh, five, uh, four, zero against. Thank you, Councilmember Purdue. 
at the request of sponsor, we deferred it indefinitely for zero. Thank you, Council Member Mitchell. Yeah, working with uh, Council Lady Allen, she's going to be bringing forth another piece of legislation that accomplishes these same goals. We're just kind of moving it from. Uh, from uh, Public Works Department into a, you know, Bill Herbert's department, uh, zoning appeals. So we think that's a better mechanism by which, and I think she's bringing that the next council meeting. So with that being said, I'd like to defer this indefinitely. We have a motion and a second for indefinite deferral. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-654 amends the Metro Code pertaining to the permitted hours of beer delivery. Council Member Westerholm. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Committee report. Council Member Purdue. This was approved 4-0 by public safety. Thank you. Council Member Westerholm. I'd move approval with a brief explanation. Have a motion and a second. Councilman. Uh, yes, members of the council. Uh, this was this is a similar bill. If you read through the analysis, as someone we passed uh, recently, uh, this extends beer delivery to places throughout Davidson County. Whereas before, there was a bill led to special event permits. Upon discussions with the convention uh, and, and tourism business uh, industry and some others, they felt there was a need to also uh, this is an opportunity to address some concerns they had related to access and storage capacity. Go ahead. To access and storage capacity of a number of um, beer vendors in the downtown area in particular, but also some uh, overall in the countywide area. So this bill uh, is just trying to give those op those businesses the opportunity to have ample supply of these. And with that explanation, I'd offer, I'd ask to move, ask for your approval. We have a motion and a second. Council Member Allen. I just I should ask you this earlier. I apologize. Can you explain the three o'clock delivery starting time, three a.m.? Could it maybe be a, a different time be discussed on when they would start the deliveries? Sure. Uh, three a.m. was the time frame that was proposed by those in the industry. They said that at that point in time, bars are closed, and so that affords them opportunity to go ahead and start that process of getting the supply back into the refrigerators, et cetera. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-655 authorizes Metro to accept permanent easements for the Nassau Stormwater Improvement Project for properties located at 607 and 609 Nassau Drive and 16, 616 Waco Lane. Council Member Baker. Committee reports, please. Council Member Hunt. Planning Zone and Historic Commit uh, Committee approved Bill 655940 against, uh, one against, I'm sorry. Thank you, uh, thank you Council Member Dominey. Public Works approved five in support and zero against. Council Member Baker. Move approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014. 656 uh, authorizes Metro government to abandon easement rights retained in former alley number 995, easements retained in an unnumbered alley, and partially abandon a 20-foot sewer easement for properties located at 711 Gallatin Road, 719 Gallatin Avenue, 714 North 12th Street, and 800 North 12th Street. Council Member Westerholm. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Uh, committee reports, please. Council Member Hunt. Planning and zoning approved Bill 656940 against, one against. Thank you, Council Member Dominey. Public Works approved 656, six in favor, zero against. Thank you, Council Member Westerholm. Without move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-657 authorizes Metro government to abandon 350 linear feet of existing utility easements for properties located at 7747 Indian Springs Drive. Council Member Weiner. Thank you, Vice Chair. Vice Chair, Vice Mayor. So, committee reports, please. Council Member Hunt. <coughs> 
Planning and Zoning approves Bill 657-94, one against. Thank you, Council Member Dominic. Public Works approves 657-64 and zero against. Thank you, Council Member Weiner. Move approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-658 accepts temporary easements for the Boyd Drive Storm Water Improvement Projects for properties located at 4141 and 4162 Ames Drive, 4170 Bob White Drive, 4121 Boyd Drive, and 4127 Meadow Hill Drive. Council Member Matthews. Committee reports. Council Member Hunt. Planning and zoning approved Bill 658-94, one against. Thank you, Council Member Dominic. Public Works approved 658, six in favor, zero against. Thank you, Council Member Matthews. I'd like to move approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2013-616 changes 0.66 acres from R6 to SP zoning for properties located at 700 and 704 Porter Road and 2009 Eastland Avenue to permit up to 11 detached single-family residential units. Council Member Westerholm. Uh, committee reports. Council Member Hunt. Plan of zoning approved. Bill 616-94, one against. Thank you, Council Member Westerholm. And move approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2013-617 changes 0.85 acres from IWD to RM20A zoning for properties located at 717 and 801 Cherokee Avenue. Council Member Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Member Hunt. Planning and zoning approved. Bill 617, uh, 9-4-0 against. Thank you, Council Member Scott Davis. I'd like to move for approval with a brief explanation. We have a motion and a second, Councilman. Um, this property was a blight on my community. It was a burnt out shell where shady characters would hide. And I had begged this owner, the current owner, to buy this so I can get rid of this blight and save taxpayers money because we were going to have to tear this down as a city. And I thank the city for wanting to do it. And I thank planning for working with this young man and helping with the affordability of housing in my community. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2013-618 changes 3.11 acres from RS-15 to MUN zoning for property located at 4225 Central Pike. Council Member Domini. On behalf of Councilman Glover, I open a, uh, actually call for committee reports. Council Member Hunt. Planning and zoning approved Bill 618-940 against. Thank you, Council Member Domini. On, on behalf of Councilman Glover, I request approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2013-619 changes 88.81 acres from R10 to IWD zoning for properties located at McGavick Pike, unnumbered north of Harding Place. <laughs> Council Member Stites. Committee reports, please. Council Member Hunt. Planning and zoning approved Bill 619-940 against. Thank you, Council Member Stites. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, we have uh, heard a few comments during the public hearing, concerns, and we're trying to get developers and neighbors uh, in the same room together, having a little trouble doing that. So I'd like to defer this indefinitely right now. We have a motion and a second on an Thank indefinite you. deferral. Councilman Bedney, do you wish to speak on the deferral motion? I wanted to ask uh, what was the follow-up on that meeting, so I'm glad. That, thanks for clarifying that. Thank you. Okay, all in favor of indefinite deferral, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 
indefinite deferral passes. BL 2013-620 changes 0.2 acres from R8 to SP for property located 906 Boscobel Street to permit up to two detached residential dwelling units. Council Member Westerholm. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Committee reports. Council Member Hunt. Planning and zoning approved Bill 620-940 against. Thank you, Council Member Westerholm. I also want to move to, um, or move the amendment. We have a motion and a second. With a brief um, explanation. Uh, we have a motion and a second, Councilman. All right, uh, members of the council, but on your desk you should have a copy of this amendment to the uh, to the SP. What this does is set out, um, uh, well, amends the SP so that in the event that the existing structure is demolished at any point in the future, it would only any new construction would only be able to. Uh, be constructed so that it is consistent with the detached accessory joint unit uh, provisions of the historic overlay. So uh, that, that was something that some neighbors had asked for and I appreciate uh, Council Lady Barry's assistance with that as well, as well as the planning department and crafting that together. So with that short explanation, I'd move approval of, of the amendment. We have a motion and a second on the amendment. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The amendment passes. I'd like to move the bill as amended. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The bill as amended passes. BL 2013-620 changes 0.27 acres from R6 to SP for property located at 2107 Bernard Avenue to permit an existing building to be used for general office, medical office, and our residential. Council Member Allen. Thank you, Vice Mayor. This is 621, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, I would like to ask for committee reports, please. Council Member Hunt. Yes. Planning and zoning approved uh, Bill 621-940 against. Thank you, Council Member Allen. Move for approval. We have a motion and a second. Council Member Scott Davis, did you wish to be recognized? Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2013-624 changes 17.92 acres from R8 and RS... I'm sorry. 623 uh, changes 0.17 acres from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 1317 Jones Avenue to permit a single family or a detached two family residential unit. Council Member Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Member Hunt. Planning and zoning approved Bill 623 940 against. Thank you, Council Member Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for, for approval with a brief explanation, please. I have a please. motion and a second, Councilman. As we can see in Nashville, we're growing pretty fast as a city. And it's thanks to the leadership in this chamber right here and those who came before me and for thanks to our great administration in the mayor's office along with our council members here. And one thing that we're doing now is we're seeing this large growth and even in areas of Nashville that for a long time that we've loved and we're growing really fast. And I just want to say that this is going to be a great development. The price point is going to be around $300,000 per unit. However, though, the next bill is going to be dealing with a development that will be affordable. So we're balancing out trying to do this very, very fairly here in the 5th District, uh, wanting everybody, rich, poor, you name it, to come live here in Nashville. I just want to thank planning for their support. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2013-624 changes 17.92 acres from R8 and RS 7.5 to IWD zoning for properties located at 443 and 457 Woodfolk Avenue and 2512, 2600, 2604 Bridge Church Pike and a portion of property at 2506 Brick Church Pike. Councilmember Harrison. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, all reports saying I move for approval with a brief explanation. I need a committee report Please. from Councilman Hunt. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Planning and Zoning approve Bill 624-940 against. Councilman Harrison. Okay, thank you. Um, this is a, a bill that's bringing in line two recently acquired properties, that, which are residential, uh, to the owner's uh, uh, property, which is industrial. And so all this does is just bring it in line with the, uh, with the rest of the property that he has. Okay. So I ask for your approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2013-625 changes 6.16 acres from CS to IWD and IWD to ORIA zoning for various properties located along Nance Lane and Paris Avenue. Council Member Moore. Committee report, please. Council Member Hunt. Planning and zoning approves Bill 625-940 against. Thank you, Council Member Moore. And I move for approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2013-626 changes 8.75 acres from R40 to SP for properties located at 1804 and 1808 Gray Bar Lane and 1919 and 1921 Woodmont Boulevard to permit up to 28 residential units. Council Member McGuire. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Member Hunt. Planning and zoning approved Bill 626-940 against. Council Member McGuire. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2013-627 changes 2.04 acres from CL and RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 719, 723, and 731 Douglas Avenue to permit up to 29 residential dwelling units and office use. Council Member Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, committee reports, please. Council Member Hunt. Planning and zoning approved Bill 627-940 against. Thank you, Council Member Davis. <clears throat> Thank you, Vice. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval with a brief explanation. I have a motion and a second, Councilman. This is another large scale development and I just want to thank the mayor's office and planning and other council members that assisted with this for their help. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2013-628 changes 7.4 acres from RS5CS and IR to SP for various properties located along Charlotte Avenue, Park Avenue, 40th Avenue North, and Elkins Avenue to permit uses in the MULA district and up to 320 residential units. Council Member Holloman. Committee reports, please. Council Member Hunt. Planning the zone improved Bill 628-940 against. Thank you, Council Member Holloman. Move approval with a brief explanation. Have a motion and a second, Councilman. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just want to take one second to say that this is a, a very urban, uh, mixed-use project that's going to really lead the way on the Charlotte Corridor, and I'm, I'm pleased to report that with approval of this tonight, uh, we have another project that's a two-story mixed-use in construction right now, and I have on my desk a request for water and sewer for another project at 46th and Charlotte. So I'm very excited to see the Charlotte Corridor come along, and this is a great first step. So with that, I move approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Next is BL 2013-629 amends the Metro Code pertaining to the keeping of chickens on residential property to remove the sunset provision and prohibition of chickens in certain council districts. Council Member Bennett. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Member Hunt. Planning and zoning approved Bill 629, 840 against, or 841 against. 
Thank you, Council Member Bennett. I need to move the substitute, please. We have a motion and a second on the substitute. Uh, Mr. Cooper, would you like to explain the substitute? The substitute adds a requirement that along with the application for chickens, the applicant provide a picture or rendering or plans for the hen house, as well as a description of the materials the hen house is to be constructed of. Thank you. I would like to move approval of the substitute uh, with a brief explanation, please. We have a motion and a second. Council Member Bennett. Okay, thank you. It's hard to believe it has been two years since we passed the original HEN ordinance. And at that time, there was so much misconception and mystery, and we really had nothing to go on as proof that this would be successful for Nashville. And now that we're two years later, I feel like we can really stand back and look at the numbers and what's, what's happened and what it really means. Um, removal of the sunset provision is what is the anchor of this legislation. Uh, it also will remove the eight, eight opt-out, excuse me, districts that were placed in there. Um, I think that with the numbers, you can really see what this truly means. Uh, 245 permits in a two-year period in Davidson County. And let's look at the true numbers. Dog calls or any other animal calls came to, for two year period now, Davidson County wide, 23,616. I'm gonna say that again, 23,616. When we looked at the actual complaints for hens, 175 complaints. County wide for two years. I really think that just says everything that we need to say. It was not this horrible thing that we heard from some folks that it was gonna be. It's been a healthy alternative for Nashville. Our kids can see where their food comes from. You can use your own leftovers to feed your own chickens. Uh, it's, it's a productive way of getting protein in your diet. Uh, you can keep the chemicals and the other negative things that can come out of the, the fancy store bought eggs from your regular farm. Um, I think it's a plus. And I would really like to thank council members Barry, Westerholm, Anthony Davis, and Berkeley Allen for working with me on this legislation. And uh, what, what a great team. I think we've worked hard on it. Let's talk cost real quick. Um, 245 permits came to 600, I'm sorry, $6,125 coming in. I know that's a lot of money. Mr. Riebling, I know that's a lot. But we estimate the cost of that actually came out to $5,024. So it's paying for itself. So the $25 permit fee is accurate and it's working right now. So I'm going to ask you to vote for this. Keep in mind the original legislation still holds true. No roosters, no hens in the front yard, predator-proof enclosure, setbacks 25 feet from a residence, 10 foot from a property line, no slaughtering, no roosters. I'll say that one again, no roosters. Um, I'm a real estate appraiser, and I've heard from several different people that, oh, this is going to affect our property values. I have yet to see where it has ever affected a property value in a negative manner. It just, typical person that would take the time to get a permit and have hens is not a person that's going to have a messy place and something that's embarrassing where codes is concerned. So... I guess the only other complication that I have heard the complaint is the homeowners association. So I know Mr. Cooper is sick of making this statement, but Mr. Cooper, would you please respond to the homeowners association situation? Well, from Metro standpoint, it's essentially irrelevant. Uh, Metro does not and cannot enforce HOA restrictive covenants. That's up to the, the homeowners themselves to enforce. Um, the application for chickens includes a, a very clear provision that says you, you may live in an area with an HOA that does not permit chickens. You need to check with your HOA. Um, so, so that is included on the, the application itself. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. I'm sure if anybody else has a question, they'll ask it, but hopefully this is the last night you have to talk chickens anymore. <laughs> I also would like to say kudos to Council Member Garrett for donning a 
yellow vest tonight in support of the hens. We do support that, and we appreciate him and, and everybody's vote. Is it a Vanderbilt vest? Now, it, that doesn't look Vanderbilt to me. But anyway, I will hush because we want to get done tonight. But I, again, I renew my request to ask for approval. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. This is just on the substitute. Uh, there are several lights on. Is it to discuss the substitute? Okay. All in favor of the substitute, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Substitute passes. Council Member Bennett. I would like to ask for approval as substituted. We have a motion and a second. Do um, you want to say anything else? I pretty much covered it last time, I okay. think. Okay. Council Member thank Bedney. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. And thank you, uh, Council Lady Bennett. And also thank you to the people of UCAN that uh, were very helpful in uh, answering, in trying to work with us, with me, to uh, provide more information to the people in my district. Uh, I collected um, uh, questions that people may have about the issue, and I sent it to UCAN, and they were uh, very um, helpful in answering all those questions. I think you all got that email. Uh, and I sent that. I think it was about two pages worth of information to my district with a poll, uh, with a survey. And uh, even after uh, doing that, um, the survey came out uh, negative. So um, negative, I mean, against the legislation. So I uh, wanted to um, use this opportunity, and based on the feedback I have got from my district, and because uh, when we were discussing the baseball field, for example, I only got like five comments from people, and when I'm discussing the chickens, I get hundreds of comments. I think for people in my district, the issue of uh, uh, not being disenfranchised when it comes to what happens in their, in, around their property is very important as a matter of quality of life. So. I would like to, I submitted two amendments to the legislation. I would like to withdraw the first one. I, I had submitted that one as a, an effort to work with the sponsor in trying to uh, include some of the um, neighborhood that where the permit was going to be pulled, but I'm going to pull it out. Uh, but I would like to submit uh, the second amendment, the one that um, brings back the opting out of my district. So I'm making that a, amendment. I think it, everyone has the amendment in their packet. Uh, is there a second on his amendment? We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion on the amendment, please raise your hand, because there's several lights on. Council Member Stein. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Um, I guess this is my penance speech um, for the vote I cast. Um, two years ago in favor of opting out. If I was a district council member in a district that, where a lot of people were opposed to this, um, I totally understand opposition to this bill. Um, and certainly opting out is a way to support it for others and oppose it for one's district. But as a policy for this county, um, it is not a good one. Um, we have, to my knowledge, had one opt-out in addition to this in the last decade or so, and it was with regard to those famous plastic stick men. But that opt-out had to do with a specific geographic area. It named specific streets that were opted out. It did not apply to individual districts throughout the county. And I would argue that if it's good policy in one place, it's good policy in another place. And I certainly understand if people are opposed to the notion of backyard chickens and certainly appreciate that position. Um, and I certainly understand those that are in favor of it. Um, it's my belief that whatever we do, we should do for this entire county. And I would urge um, everyone to vote against um, opting out any districts and simply expressing one's opposition by voting against the bill if one is opposed to it. Councilmember Potts, you raised your hand, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I don't speak very often, but um, 
I'm not for or against chickens. I was raised on a farm and I was around chickens throughout my entire, entire childhood. But as we're represented for each district, we have to represent the people, the majority. At this moment, um, I had 98 contacts via email, phone call, et cetera, against this legislation, only two supporting this legislation since it all started. So as we're elected, we're, we have to re represent the majority. My, my constituents spoke two years ago, and their stand on raising chickens in our community hasn't changed. After they fought hard to be opted out, you listened and honored their wishes. I would like you to support the opting out because there's nine, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, council, uh, John Cooper, there's nine council districts on that amendment. Correct. And I understand what Councilman Stiles said. This is bad policy, but there's nine council districts that are on this amendment to be opted out. And that's almost 25% of the, of the county if you look at it. So if that many council members are against it and they want to be opted out, then the bill is a bad bill, but I just wish you'd honor the opting out, and vote for support that. If you'd be honored to, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Council Member Dow, you raised your hand. Thank you. Um, again, it's not often I speak as well. Um, I, you know, have spent a lot of time out in the district talking about chickens uh, with my neighbors. I'm definitely not opposed to chicken. It's, I consider myself a green person. But uh, as uh, Councilman Potts has stated, overwhelmingly the people in our district do not want um, uh, to have chickens and they don't want the legislation there. Uh, Councilman Stein spoke about what's good policy for the county and what's good for one area is good for the whole county. But I think uh, one thing I ask this council body to take in consideration that um, it's not one district here, one district there. We have most of our southern area of the county uh, that uh, have chosen and asked and requested uh, to uh, opt out of this legislation. Now, this has not been, I, I hear people talk about education. Uh, I don't think it's an issue of education because most of the people in our area are farmers or were farmers. A lot of the people that contacted me raised chickens and they've made a decision that they no longer want to raise them nor live next door to them. They own farm property in which they raise hens there. Um, as Councilman Lady Bennett stated, she said that in the two years we've had this legislation, it's working. I couldn't agree with her more. It is working. It's working for your district, and it's working for our district. And, it's, it's, um, and I think we're all happy about the way things are going. I've not had uh, one person call me and ask me to uh, change uh, the legislation and opt our district in. In fact, it's been quite the opposite. Um, as a council body, we've looked at uh, several pieces of legislation, some involving millions of dollars uh, worth of tax dollars that we spent 30 seconds or five seconds pressing a button, yes or no. Uh, we've spent so much time, it's embarrassing talking about chickens, uh, to be honest with you. It's quite embarrassing that uh, we pass millions and millions of dollars worth of legislation every day in five seconds, and yet we spend all this time talking about chickens. And what I would ask this council body to do is to respect the wishes of my constituents in my district who do not want the undue expense and burden of uh, patrolling chickens. Uh, and one thing I will say is I am president of my HOA, and right now Metro uh, Animal Control, uh, they will come out if we have chickens or some type of illegal because we've opted out. Uh, once we opt in or if this legislation is passed, that undue financial burden is going to be placed on our HOA to enforce. Because if we're opted in, as John has stated, it's up to the HOA to enforce our covenants and our rules and regulations. So that leaves that up to us to enforce. Right now, I think part of the reason why we have people who want to opt out is that we are not getting uh, the level of service when it comes to um, animal control right now. A lot of it's been handled by the neighbors, and I think um, if we can resolve some of those issues, neighbors may be more inclined to look at this, but for right now, they're not interested in having chickens. Uh, as Councilman Potts stated, it's more than just uh, a few council districts. It's uh, nine. It's mostly everybody in the southern area of the county, and I ask that you support the opt-out and continue to allow us to uh, respect the wishes of our constituents and not be a part of the legislation. You can enjoy your chickens, I support it, but allow us to not have them because we do not, uh, the neighbors do not want them. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go down the list. Councilman Anthony Davis, are you on the amendment? Thank you, Vice Mayor. Just a quick uh, 
uh, just want to concur with Councilman Stein. Um, I also agree with the bad policy comment and think we need to do it countywide this time. Um, I just think we've proven over the last couple of years that we haven't had a lot of issues. This hasn't turned into Key West, as I like to say, with chickens running around everywhere. Uh, I totally understand, you know, where the Southeast folks are coming from. Um, I just think this time we just need to get an up or down vote and just kind of see where we land and and land the policy countywide. And I appreciate uh, where they're coming from and thank my colleagues for participating uh, in this. But I think we'd like to move this forward and please uh, defeat the amendment. Thank you. Councilman Dominey, are you on the amendment? Okay. The, uh, there's been some discussion as to whether it should and shouldn't take place, whether we should have the amendment for the opt-out. Uh, and it, it hasn't been a problem since it was passed two years ago. According to data that was shared with me by the sponsor, the 28th Council District had the fifth highest number of complaints regarding chickens of all council districts across the city, and they're expressly prohibited. That would be, that would be in favor of the bill if that wasn't occurring before the bill was passed two years ago. It, it was been an ongoing issue in my community. Residents overwhelmingly have asked not to have the chickens. I, in fact, in two, two years, I have had 11 people 11 people contact me in favor of chickens and dozens upon dozens upon dozens say no. Uh, I wish personally I had chickens. I would love to have them myself. In fact, I had a homegrown egg sandwich on my way down here today from a friend of mine that lives over in Wilson County, but that's not my option because uh, I'm elected to represent the district and I'm going to do my best to do that. And I ask that you support this opt out uh, for the time being. Council Member Claiborne, are you on the amendment? Thank you. Um, uh, my district has not opted out for chickens. I have chickens in my neighborhood. I have chickens within a block of my house. To my knowledge, there's been no complaints, no problems in the two years since we've had this on the books. Uh, I grew up with chickens. Uh, fed them, gathered the eggs, chopped a few necks, and plucked some feathers for a good dinner. <laughs> um, I don't have anything against chickens. Um, I do... Uh, support Councilman Bedney's uh, amendment though. These nine districts represent uh, over 150,000 people that have uh, said to these nine council members, we don't want this in our district. And that's a substantial number of people that whose voices we should listen to. Whether it's good policy or bad policy, we're not here to set policy. We are here to represent the people that elected us to sit in this chamber. And so, with the amendment, uh, I can vote for the council ladies' bill if these districts are opted out. Without the amendment, I cannot vote for the bill. And I encourage all of you to consider that if you had something in your district that your constituency had plainly spoken to you about, and it was about to be overturned against your wishes, how would you consider that? Councilmember Duvall, are you on the amendment? You are recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, for clarification, Mr. Cooper, would you explain what the amendment actually does, what it prohibits in the way of chickens in these districts, please? Currently, there are eight districts where chickens are not allowed. The bill filed by Councilmember Bennett would remove those eight districts from that prohibition, prohibition so that they would be allowed countywide. This amendment adds those eight districts plus one more into uh, an exclusion from the, the chicken bill. And is, it, is that all properties or would that ex still exclude the six acre regulation? If you are, I guess it would be up to the health department to, deter to determine, but if you are in a on a GSD lot of over five acres, then I believe chickens are allowed if it's agricultural property. So all of all of these districts, even though they're op opti opting out, still have, if they're in the general services district and they have folks of over five acres of property can have chickens. And that is probably where most of our chickens are for the few that we have. And uh, by the way, I have nothing against chickens either, especially when they're smothered in barbecue sauce. Um, I don't think we should be looking at a cookie cutter plan for this 
and and be honest with you, using our time for a bill like this for everybody in this in this county. I think Councilman Claiborne said it very clearly. We got 150,000 people that are represented by these by these districts, and these people are absolutely adamantly 90 plus percent. I probably go well above that in opposition to not being able to continue to be opted out. It's, uh, it, it's sad that we have to go through this. We didn't have any complaints in our area because we were opted out. The few places we had the chickens, they were dealing with it and we didn't have the problems. I promise you, I have in our, in our particular areas, Southeast Davidson County, we have a lot of homeowners associations. And those homeowners associations, the first people they're going to call when there's a complaint is going to be their councilman. You've got to get these animals taken care of. Why are they allowing these chickens? They're not going to call the HOA. They're going to call us they're because they think we're ghostbusters or something. And that's the kind of calls we get. Um, I think that we, there was a uh, statement in here about the council districts, um, similarly situated council districts, um, being able to be distinguished. Our particular area has a state park with a lot of wildlife, and that does differentiate us. And I'm surprised that there are a couple of other areas in our, in our county or in our metropolitan area that hasn't also considered that, where there is a lot of wildlife. We have fox and coyotes that attack animals all the time, and the chickens will not help us. And I don't care what kind of regulations you want to put on the chicken houses, we are going to have problems dealing with it. Leave the opt-out as it stands, and we will not have any more complaints than what we had. And very last, this is not about revenue. I don't think it ever was about g generating revenue. And what it was about is allowing people that want chickens to be able to have them in certain areas where we do not have a safety issue. Thank you. Councilman Holloman, are you on the amendment? Yes, Council, you're yes. recognized. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. I, I just want to make one quick point to follow up on what Councilman Stein said about the distinction between the uh, stickman bill with the corridors identified and the way that this was set up and why I think this is problematic going forward, which is that these boundaries of what was allowed and not allowed were set on the 2010 uh, census. Am I correct about that, Mr. Cooper? And what concerns me about that is the way it's written, that means that when we have reapportionment, the situation that we're going to have is going to be pretty messy because what we're going to end up with is pieces of those districts getting moved around. And so after eight more years, what you're going to have is a situation where parts of some districts are in, parts of other districts are out, and we're going to have to address that. So I just think going forward for a zoning bill, it's problematic to identify them council district by council district because those lines change. And so the policies for certain people that live in those areas that get moved from one council district to another are going to change over time. So I think it's beyond just the the issue of the council districts as they exist today. It's also what do we do in the long term when we start writing things into the zoning code that would that way, and if we write some things for this district in this census period and some things for another district in another census period, it's going to be very hard, if not impossible, for animal control or zoning codes uh, folks to enforce these and, and be able to know what's in and what's out in the county. So, thank you. Council Member Jernigan, are you on the amendment? Amendment. It's my, probably my last time to speak, so... <laughs> Councilman Stein, I think the stick bill is probably going to be my legacy. But, uh, but you're right, it was one corridor, it was Lebanon Road. I <laughs> so anyway, um, the, uh, Councilman Holman stole my thunder. It, when I voted last time, I voted to opt out. Um, I am not going to do that this time. I reconsider because specifically uh, of the recent the census in eight more years, people be in and people be out, and it's very messy. I think we need consistency. And I'm going to vote no on the amendment. Thank you. Council Member Baker, are you on? Okay, Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor Neighbors. I have to echo uh, many of my colleagues here in regards to this bill. This is a very unique situation. 
Um, I deal with policy a lot uh, in the area of human resources, and sometimes you have to make exceptions on a case-by-case -case basis. And um, our constituents overwhelmingly have said that they are not ready for this legislation. We have asked the sponsor to defer this so that we could have the opportunity to do education, um, to do some of the things that were done in East Nashville and West Nashville and Green Hills prior to our first vote. Um, it's unfortunate that when we first got on this council, within three months of being on the council, we voting on a chicken bill that just caused all kind of um, emails and craziness in terms of people calling me and upset because of the fact that the codes issues and the health department issues that we have now in Southeast Davidson County aren't being taken care of in a timely manner. There are issues that have been occurring um, with the health department and with the codes department that takes somewhat up to two years to take care of. We have some significant challenges in Southeast Davidson County. We did not take this lightly in terms of expressing our concerns uh, to the sponsor. Um, we feel that uh, East Nashville and Green Hills and um, West Nashville did uh, have preference with UCAN because they spent a significant amount of time in those areas prior to the vote when we first got onto this council. The other thing I want to also point out is I was at the planning commission meeting and this is just not a council member thing. The two planning commissioners, um, uh, Commissioner Blackshear, uh, Dalton, uh, is it Dalton, is it? Okay, G Commissioner Dalton and um, former councilman and Commissioner Atkins both live in Southeast Davidson County. And when they had the vote at the Planning Commission last week, the two of them echoed the very same thing that all of us in Southeast Davidson County are saying. And they ended up being the two, vote, two no votes on the Planning Commission. That's concerning when you've got that many people from the council members to the planning commissioners who all live and are hearing the concerns in Southeast Davidson County saying no. So I just urge you, uh, my colleagues, to consider what we are all saying. It is not just us as council members, but also the planning commissioners that express the very same things that we are sharing with you. We're not ready for this area of the county um, to be within this legislation. I don't know what the solution would be. Um, I know that there has been some talk about maybe we should have had this legislation where it was individual zoning districts. But th this is not the solution to force it on a large area of the county that clearly is loudly saying to you all as council members that we're not ready. Thank you. Council Member Purdue. I'd like to call for the question, please. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of previous question, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Previous question passes. We're now back on the amendment, and it will be a machine vote. Everyone, please vote. We're on the amendment. Madam Clerk, please close the machine and tally the vote. So we have 17 for, 20 against, one abstention. The amendment fails. We're back on the original bill as substituted. Uh, dis uh, Council Member Bennett. I just renew my request to vote for this legislation, and I appreciate everybody's patience and through all this. Thank you. Okay, we're now on the bill as substituted. Um, we will have a machine vote.
Yes, Councilman Bedney. Can I speak? No. No, we're we're voting. On the on the legislation? Yes, the main bill. We're voting on the main bill right now. Can I speak on the main bill? No. No, we've already Thank you. Um has everyone voted? Madam Clerk, please close the machine and tally the vote. We have 34, eight against, no abstentions. The bill is substituted, passes. We're now at BL 2013-632, accepts a donation of three Tennessee walking horses to the Metro Police Department, Council Member Stein. Move approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. We're now at BL 2013-633, amends the Metro Code to allow beer sales on Sunday starting at 10 a.m. Council Member Baker. All committees and move approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passed. Did you wish to speak on that, Councilman Tiger? Yeah, sometimes we don't give credit where credit's due. If you read John's very thorough analysis where this bill was repealed in 1946, I wanted to thank Councilman Garrett for his actions then. We have a motion and a second. We pass Councilman Baker's bill. Is there a motion to adjourn? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. 